Yes, the recording is in progress. And now let's go and turn ourselves on on Facebook. And uh, there we go. We're live on Facebook. Hello, everybody. It's uh, it's our favorite time of the week. It's uh, our, uh, let me get rid of this here. Uh, and this is where we get together with people out there and uh, uh, just have a nice talk. You know, it's not contentiousness. It's none of this stuff that's going on in the country, which is contentious and horrible. Uh, and we got a lot of people waiting, so let's not let them wait any longer. Here they come, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and I don't mean that in a sexual manner. Uh, here we go. Oh, and there's Mandy. She's here again this week. Uh, let's see here. We got Charlene and we got William Ferguson. Hello, William. We haven't seen you in a while. Edward yeah, Berger is there with that. That's right. Hat. What is that silly hat you've got? <laughs> ah, that's a hat from Disney. I wore it once before. What and, and what is what is it? What is it? It's say? it's from it's from Disneyland. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's from Disneyland. Yeah. We'll we'll uh we'll uh, we'll allow that. Oh, okay. here comes Shecky, and here comes Marjorie. Boy, everybody's here today. Okay, full house. But anyway, uh, hello everybody. Hello. Well, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, you're the second uh, Zoom call I've made today. I had a Zoom call I did earlier where I was interviewing uh, our former governor of the state of New York, uh, who was, wait a minute, hold on a second, uh, the state of New York, um, which was uh, David Patterson. Hold on a second. I got more people to admit here. And I got Paula to admit. Okay, there we go. I was talking to the former governor. And uh, it, it, the interview will be on on Friday on the show. It's an hour long, so yeah. But uh, a lot of lot of good talk about politics there. But we wouldn't do that here. Hello, Shecky. Hi, Jeff. Hello, Ben. Are you there, Jeff? Click on. I your, am. Uh, Charlie Wallace is here. But wait a minute, um, uh, Paul, Paula. We need your camera to be on too. There we there we go. She's really good at this. Charlie's really good at this. <laughs> Jeff, where the hell are you? What's going on? Just turn that on your it? camera. Your camera. There you go. Bravo. Hello. Bravo. And, it, and I can hear it too, and you can too. Bravo <laughs> to all of you. Oh boy. Yeah. So um Hello. How are how are we all doing? Yeah. Good. Pretty good. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Charlie just said pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I've been doing a bunch of umpire crap. I might get interrupted during this because it's the, you might get what? Do a bunch of umpire stuff. All kinds of weird things going on. Well, wait a minute. I tell people what you do. <laughs> I'm the treasurer for the Austin Softball Umpire Association. So not only do I umpire games. Yeah. I have to keep track of everybody else's game so I can pay pay them every two weeks. Wow. So okay. I have to know who's working what fields on what nights. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, it's I'm working out. Uh, so what, what is the problem that you're running? Well, the problem is that tonight they want to move the games from one field to the other, and I got to notify all the umpires that, you know, the games have been moved. No. Okay. <laughs> so that, it, so. And this okay. just came up just before I was here, trying here to. Comes, here comes Vernon Nunn, too. Are you well, we got a lot of people here today. Yeah. There were up to 13 people with me. And I don't count, so. <laughs> what the hell? Where were you last week, Mandy? We missed you. Were you? I just, I think I was just really busy doing something at work. I can't remember now. It's all a blur. You know, who knows? Yeah, well, you know, work, work trumps uh, anything else these days. I know. I gotta, mean, but I watched, show, keep, what? I watched the show that night or the next day. And I think I commented. It was a really good show. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a good one. It was a good yeah. one. So anybody have anything they want to talk about? Hmm. Olivia Newton John just died. I just saw yeah. that. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Wait, no. somebody just texted me and said, check the news. What did you just say? 
Olivia Newton-John just died? Oh, well, she didn't no. just die. She died earlier. Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, she must have died the day because I hadn't seen yeah. it. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. as soon as you get that message that somebody's dead, it's not like she just died. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, my friend. There's a distinction. Just texted me and said, did you see the news? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, right talking, it came, my text came in. Really? Oh, fine. Uh, God, uh, and and what's she referring to when she says, oh, "Did you see the news?" That I know because they know I love Olivia Newton John. Oh, oh, I okay. I mean, it couldn't be that they like uh, you know pass that bill in Washington or no. something <laughs> else. No, no, he no, he knows I love. Why it. is everybody so shocked though? When somebody like she's been ill over the years, she's oh, made breast cancer. Yeah, yeah. She made no no uh, qualms about it, and I'm so sorry, she dies, and everybody her. goes, "Ooh, we're surprised." Well, I'm surprised. I'm just saying. I mean, you know, like, if someone's ninety nine years old, we're all shocked that whoever it is passed away. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, if I drop dead tomorrow, would you be surprised? I would be shocked. You'd be. Yeah, shocked. I would be too. I would, would be, be. It would be a personal be loss. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it would but be. you're also eighty two, so it's like, hey, good run. Your first thought is, oh, my God, Alex Bedden is dead. And your second thought is, well, then who am I going to call? Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And what am I going to do, do on, what do on Monday? Do on Mondays? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what am I doing on Mondays? <laughs> and a year from now, you'll forget me. What the you hell? Better, you know. better make sure Marjorie has your passcode so she can have continue We're this. We can talk talking about, about that today. We were talking about that today. I got a thing from some guy. I've gotten these before, but this one bothered me because it said, "Here's your email number, and here here's your um, here's your password." password. And uh, then it says, "I'm gonna I'm, I'm looking at you, and I have pictures of you jerking off to porn." I've gotten <laughs> these before, and uh, and, and great, everybody, you know, I'd, I'd like to see videos of me jerking off. To porn. <laughs> yeah, we can uh, have that too. Uh, but anyway. Uh, but because he had my password, I then had to change my pa I changed my wow. password on that account, on that email account, and also on my Apple account, which had the same password. Wow. And uh, I had to do that. So that took up half my morning. Um, well, but I, have I, some, I, what? This, I have some good news. I just, when I clicked on my internet, those two, those people that killed Ahmad Aubrey got life. Oh good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Good. oh, is that what you were supposed to check the news yeah, for? The question Maybe. is in the he state. Made, has to tell me state, about that. But the question is, it was the state prison, not the federal. Right. It was the federal. They got Ooh. the federal. Oh, really? Hate crimes. Hate crimes. Yeah. Hate crimes. Yeah, that means they're going to do the whole stretch. There's no yeah. parole. Yeah, that's good. That's yes, really good. good. Yeah. Yeah, they got life in prison for committing a federal hate crime. Yeah. 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 Well, getting back to my problem. Sorry. Just <laughs> <laughs> Your email. Yes, what? much more important things to and worry about. off to no, porn. Have, have, you, have, you <laughs> ever, have you ever gotten this kind of letter? I've gotten them about three times in the past. They actually had your password. Huh? They had the password. That's what wow. bothered me. So I just changed wow. my password on stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't think they got into my machine. I don't think having my password to my email is going to get you into my machine. No, but it, it could. There could be correspondence from your bank or whatever. Well, there. no, that's why I changed the. Uh, yeah. That's why I changed the email address. They could maybe get into my email, but that you know they can't get. They it's there's no way that they could put a, uh, uh, what do you call it? what's those things they call a yeah. Trojan yeah. horse on my yeah. computer, you know, with just having my email, password. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Vernon, well, they can't. They can't hack into your webcam what were you going to say vernon i'm sorry vernon vernon uh, a couple of years a couple of years ago can you not hear me uh, hold, on. Okay. hold on okay hold on go on you're okay no you're we can hear you you can hear me now yeah mm -hmm. okay all right i'm i'm on uh i'm on the headphones i didn't know if i had them selected or not yeah um a couple of years ago i i started really getting frustrated because every time i would try to log into something i've got like 12 different emails and i would change the password on an email and the next time i'd go to log in i'd forget what the password was mm -hmm. so i started 
I started following what I read somewhere that terrorists used to do, how they would communicate securely. They would create an email account and then they would put a draft message on that email account. Mm -hmm. And so I keep, uh, I keep a draft message on one particular email account that I have. Mm -hmm. And it's got all my passwords in it. So if I get stumped, I just open up that email, open up that draft and mm -hmm. say, okay, where, which one, am, which one am I looking for? And then I find, I find that email password or that bank account password or whatever it is, type it in and I'm done. I don't yeah, I do, keep I changing think, them. I do the same thing in a word document with the password to open up the word document. Mm. Well, you know what I hate? Are these mm. these these companies that password one, you know, uh, and what's the other one? Uh, there are quite a few of them where you, where they it automatically put a password in for you. Some really, yeah, ridiculous one. Five Z nine three dash seven two four. You know that kind of thing. But and it gives you a choice. Yeah, it but I, you a then, what? It gives you a choice to do manual or let them do it. Well, the only thing I don't like about it is they then have my password, okay? <laughs> and then if I don't keep paying them for their service, guess what? They're I've locked out all my passwords. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I don't Google like doing that. Time. So I just keep, uh, you know, I, I I keep changing mine. I have a, I have a new one that I'm using a lot that mm -hmm. um, is fairly secure because it's not one you would normally think of. All right. Um, it, it's a uh, it, yeah. It's it's Alex one two three. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> four. And, and if they ask you to change it, it's one two three four. It's yes. one two three four. Yeah. But anyway, so I you know I mean what the hell you know it's um uh, it's it's interesting. I hold on a second. I got to do something here because I have a a machine here. A, a computer, a rather a drive, it keeps turning itself on and off. And I figure I will just let it just unplug it and then it won't do that anymore. And I don't have to care about it because it's not an important drive anyway. No, anyway, so anyway, so this, this guy did, did, did this to me and I've gotten the same, almost the same letter before about, you know, well, I, we have pictures of you. We're able to get into your camera and they have pictures of you masturbating. Oh, great. <laughs> they never said they have my password before, though. But yeah, yeah. It, never, it never said they that what the password was. And I figure that what they did, they probably got that in a password breach that happened. They can go on to the, the dark net and they can get lists of people's names with their password, okay, to maybe their email. All right, so the, he's got that. Fine, good. But there's nothing more he can do with it except maybe get into my email. You know, if he even knows my email, well, he probably does know my email address, but he doesn't know. He can maybe get my email. That's about it. So now he can't get the email anymore and change the password. But all this other stuff about I, I, I could access your camera and I could see you masturbating and uh, please don't try and use a... Uh, uh, a Trojan horse finder from uh, one of these companies like I have, which is BitTorrent or Bitdefender, uh, because it won't work. I've hidden it so it won't work. No, they work. Okay, if you've got a Trojan horse on my computer, I will be able to find it. Why? What do you smoke? <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! I thought, I, was San... he's got. <laughs> I thought I was in San Francisco. <laughs> That's horrible. What what do you what, what do you do? Is it vaping? Is it pot or no? Is it's, just, it's just to, it's just nicotine. Just nicotine. Why don't you just oh. give it up altogether? Yeah, mm -hmm. I should. Uh, oh, they, I you know recently I, How old are you, William? I'm fifty three. Quit now! Quit now! You got a good shot. Okay, quit now. <laughs> But you wait a couple of more years and saying, well, you know, I haven't got any. I'm just trying to save your life. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Go ahead. Do whatever you no, want. 
You were a smoker. <laughs> were you a smoker, Alex? Oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah, he was. Yeah. And was, I, quit, uh... I quit when I was, I think, 42. Hmm. And uh... well, I gave up the cigarettes. And the nice thing about this vape is, uh, you know, with cigarettes, you get like 5,000 different chemicals in it. All this is is just nicotine and a little oil and some water, and that's it. Do you think there are no 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 uh, chemicals in that? I mean, you know, not really. I mean, I can pronounce all the all, all the ingredients. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, it it's not. I used I used to smoke quite a bit, and then when I quit, um, yeah, it just my coughing stopped. Okay. I took up the vape. Yeah. So, but now uh, every time you exhale, the whole room fills with vape. <laughs> That's what I like. About I mean, it. it looks horrible. It's not. It's all it is is vapor, right? It's water vapor. Yes, yeah, just water vapor. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not poisoning other people in the room. Here we go. Here we go, folks. You ready? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, there you yeah. go. <laughs> I like that. That's the best part about it. Here comes Mike Chisholm. We're up to 14 people now. Wow. Oh, boy. Boy, 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 boy. Yeah, we're all getting secondhand vapor. <laughs> <laughs> hello, uh, hello, uh, Mr. Chisholm. How are you? Hey, everybody. I'm good. I'm sorry I'm uh, in a weird angle right now. The meeting is converting. I just had uh, a phenomenal, phenomenal conversation with the man who introduced you and Checky together. Um, and it was uh, we, we, with, uh, with Mr. Steve Weiner, and he says to give both of you his uh, deepest regards and is very, very excited. Yeah, well, we're going to, we're working it out so that Shecky and I and Marjorie are going over to have lunch with them at their place. Uh, that sounds like a very entertaining time. I would love to. Uh, Not to as entertaining as you would think. <laughs> <laughs> right, they Shecky? They won't go outside. They won't well, go outside. But, you know, um, Lori's a wonderful girl. Oh, yeah. No, uh, what they're going to do is she <laughs> said to us, well, we don't want to go out to eat because it's not good. But you can come over here and we'll order out for you. So I figure hey, that's other. a good cheap meal. And she always put, puts up the last time they as sent out for food. It was more than we could possibly ever eat. Well, she wasn't sure what everyone was going to have. So she had breakfast, brunch stuff and yeah. lunch stuff. And it was so much food. Well, I recommend when you get there, go borrow a book. He won't notice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. He, he, uh, I don't think he uses a Kindle, does he, Rick? I don't think so. Do you? Well, you've got a lot of books, too. Oh, I don't like reading them on the Kindle. You don't. Marjorie has gotten used to reading them on Kindle. If well, I'm, I'm traveling, a... I will read them on the Kindle, so I'm not carrying 10 pounds of books in my luggage. Right. Okay. All right. But think of all the forests you're saving by using the Kindle, you know. I like having a book in my lap. Sorry. Well, you like that whole ritual, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but anyway. So how's everything in Georgia? I wanted to ask that, Mandy, because, boy, you're you're... Your state is just up to its ass in politics. <laughs> I've been trying to avoid it. <laughs> I, I mean, Stacey Abrams is now running for governor, right? Yes. Yep. Are you going to vote yeah. for her? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't even feel like voting. Isn't that terrible? Well, you know, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. We got a governorship running happening here in this state, and I don't know what I'm going to do because you don't like the governor, right, Rick? No, hater. And you don't, don't like her, hate, Marjorie. Hate. Not hater. Hater. You know, I didn't ask that anywhere in that interview because you watched the interview I did with uh, with uh, the former the governor. Uh, did he? Did I ask him about Hochul? I don't think I did. No. No, I forgot to ask him about Hochul. I did ask him all about Cuomo and what happened there, and you know. And, and oh, I asked him about K Kristen Gillibrand because he was the guy who gave her the senatorship because Hillary Clinton gave it up 
And he then had to appoint somebody to be senator. So he appointed her senator. And I said, do you have any regrets? He says, every day. <laughs> 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 because she, she's the one that went after Franken and yeah. kind of screwed him over, you know. Yeah. And I said, you're responsible for that. You know, said, well, I am. He, he actually wanted to be senator. And I said, but you couldn't appoint yourself senator, could you? And he says, yes, I could have. But there would have been too many problems associated with it. You know, uh, so I, I didn't. But he, he wanted to run for senator. That, in fact, that was his deal with um, Spitzer. With, with Spitzer, that <clears throat> if, uh, uh, Hillary were to quit that Spitzer would give him the senatorship, but uh, it just didn't go that way. Somehow Spitzer got out before yes. any of that could happen. <laughs> Client number nine. You know. That's right. <laughs> Boy, but what I told, said to him was, God, you know, it's, it's kind of like, uh, it's almost lethal to become governor in this state because she tried to get him out. Uh, Gillibrand, she tried That's to get cool. him to quit because he went to a baseball game for free or something. And and so wow. she tried to get him out of there. They previously gotten Spitzer out of there. And then they got Cuomo, who followed uh, uh, David uh, on uh, um, as governor. They got him out of there. And I said, nobody can hold that job, you know. Everybody's uh, so out to get it and, and get somebody out of there that they go after the current uh, person who's there. He says, yeah. It's like being the number two in Al-Qaeda. Well, I also <laughs> asked him, well, I, I, you can watch the interview, but his father, you know, was a big politician. What was his father, a congressman, Rick? Uh, no, he was like state assembly or something. He was state assembly, but he was a big politician. Oh yeah, he was a power broker. Yeah, um, um, and, and Basil Patterson. Basil Patterson. Everybody seemed to like him, you know. But I said, "Here, your father's in politics. He's getting people are trying to screw him over every minute he's alive." Didn't that say something to you to like go into real estate or something? <laughs> and he said, "Yeah, but uh, slowly I got dragged into it on my own." So he was in the state senate. It was in the state senate yeah okay yeah yeah and paul how's it going out in uh out in ohio well the politics are kind of mixed uh um kind of awful <laughs> well no, they're uh, awful everywhere though they're just terrible no well, this is true I, I live in a bubble you know that the the area that i live in is is uh right around the university so it's um, it has that that kind of feel about it, but but uh, right up the road, it's uh, Trump country, so it's that's that's Ohio. Yeah, yeah. How's it out in Texas, there, uh, Scott? Well, at least our governor's doing something. Sending of people to New York. Yeah, we're what, getting... a, what an asshole. <laughs> Yeah, but well, did you see our idiot mayor? Now I know we're getting to politics. He goes to the bus terminal to meet the immigrants when the bus yeah. arrives. Yeah, really? I, I thought it was a class do, act, actually. What he should do is pay, give them a ticket back to Texas. <laughs> well, apparently it was a full bus and only 13 people were still on the bus when it got to New York. Oh, yeah. Oh, they all got off along the way? Wow. Uh-huh. What, wow. is, what is the story with that? What happens to these people when uh, when they get bust out? Texas is dribbling immigrants. Yeah. <laughs> He's grandstanding. Texas is not my problem. Yeah, how many does he put on a bus in a, at, one, at one time? 40, 50, I don't know. Yeah, let it fill up the bus. I mean, I mean he's such a jerk. It's, he is. I mean, this, I don't want to talk about politics, but this isn't even about politics. This is just human beings being somehow shipped somewhere he's sending he them to he's so smart D. too you know what he's sending them to washington dc also what were you saying scott well and, and and the thing is he has this smug smile on his face when they show him on the news doing this he he thinks he's a genius 
<laughs> Abbott, Abbott. Yeah. Oh God, that's amazing. That's just amazing. And how's everything up where you live, Mike? Uh, uh, a. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um. There's a lot. There's a groundswell when you talk politically. Uh, there's a groundswell of 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 uh, I don't know if I want to call it hatred, but for some people, it would certainly be there with our current prime minister right now. And uh, so the the other party uh, is jockeying to figure out who their next leader is going to be that goes up against Trudeau in the next election. And that's there's a lot of drama happening within that those that party is called the the Conservatives, and and there's a lot of drama happening there as they're eating their young and beating each other up. And then they're all going to make nice when they go for the federal election. So you mean Canadians are making Americans feel good about themselves? There you go. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you know what? I, uh, I I've never been part of the process of watching somebody within a party mm -hmm. get elected. Uh, but the phrase of 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 not knowing it's better not to know how the sausage gets made certainly yeah. ice here. Oh my gosh, it, it's not it's not fun watching these people who are apparently united uh bash each other the way that they do um yeah. but we're so, getting too close now to talking about politics so let's let that go let's talk about porn <laughs> charlie seen any good porn lately oh yeah oh, God. <laughs> you want to give me your email address and your password <laughs> Hmm. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I was going to say, um, <clears throat> let's see here. What? Well, uh, 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 Shecky, I found yes. I finally watched the last episode of Orville, the Orville, oh, for the season, uh, and I I saved it because it, it I like the show so much. It is I great. wanted to just have a moment to savor it and to have something to look forward to when I watched mm -hmm. everything else, you know. And I watched it last night, and it was kind of not more mild than the other episodes. Well, it was the wedding episode. Yeah, yeah it was a nice episode, but it was a nice episode. And they said the reason they ended it that way was because the week before they had had one of the lead characters was killed. You know, they killed off one of the lead characters and all that. And they wanted to end the season with a, a positive kind of thing. And they I did. didn't like her anywhere. I'm glad she's dead. What platform is that on? Who said that? I said that. Yeah, you didn't like her, huh? Nah, she was a she was a mean the bitch. Girl. <laughs> she was an anti android. Yes. Yeah. She was mean. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, hope that show, I hope that show comes back. It's a really oh, good. It's an excellent show. Yes. Yeah. I I watched the first two seasons and now I can't find it. Where is it at now? You, it's Hulu, on Hulu, Hulu, but it's going to Disney Plus this week. Yeah, I don't get Disney Plus, so I'll have to see my Hulu. Okay. I don't yeah. use that. I it, what's so good about it is, is that it's better than the uh, than the two episodes they did on Fox. Uh, season yeah. they did on Fox because on Fox they were doing. It was more uh, comedy, and also yeah. they were forty two minute episodes. There are some episodes of this. Oh, this it's twice finale, the length of that. Eighty minutes. Or oh something. wow! Yeah. One was one was a, a, I think an hour and twenty six minutes. One yeah, of geez, it's a feature film. Yeah, yeah, they're good. They're good. Yeah. And it was worth every minute of it. They were really good. Mm -hmm. They dealt with the, they dealt dealt with contemporary subjects in a sci-fi setting, if you can imagine. Am I right, Scott? Yes, excellent, excellent uh, social interactions and and yeah, the whole thing it was amazing. It was a very good show. And the old show was the other two seasons because and Seth MacFarlane they. They tried to integrate comedy into sci-fi, and here they didn't have much comedy. There's not not a lot funny about the, the Orville, you know. Mm. I mean, there are, there are moments, but you know. no, it's you know, sex re um reidentification of people, things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and uh, a Trump-like uh, planet. Yeah, <laughs> that woman who's running that planet, whatever. Yeah, you know. Krill? the krill. Let's make our planet great again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it was really good this season, really good. And uh, then I'm watching. What am I watching? I'm watching the Sandman. Hmm. You're familiar with the, of course, with the DC comic, right, Rick? Oh yeah. By Neil Gaiman, who also gave us Lucifer, if I'm not mistaken. That was yeah. Neil Gaiman as well. 
And uh, ha have you gotten into the, the Sandman now? Well, I've seen the first two episodes. Yeah. You get to the fourth episode, uh, Lucifer Morningstar is there. It's, he goes she, He goes to hell and uh, meets up with Lucifer, who is is a woman in this case. And it's a, it, I, I think it's a pretty good show. There's some, a couple of really, and it looks nice. It looks great. And uh, I, I like the character. I like what it's all about. It's it's great. I can't get Marjorie to watch it. Oh. Not even one episode. Hey, watch it for one episode, Marjorie. Mm. See if you like it or you don't like it. No, it's not my kind of thing. How do you know, Marjorie? It's not your kind of thing. Just watch, right. uh, watch one if you watch it with me. Okay, I'll watch it with you. I did Peaky Blinders again. You know, you're going to remind me forever that you made me watch Peaky Blinders. And the only reason you did, the only reason I couldn't make it through an episode is I couldn't understand a word they were saying. Wait, that's where you turn on the speed subtitles. So I decided yeah. to turn, watch okay. an episode and turn on the subtitles, and then I liked it. It wasn't you who made me like it. No, I was watching the whole series without subtitles. Then when you came in, we put it on with subtitles. Yeah, so and then you, you said, and it wasn't a terrible thing for you to do because you said you finally understood what was going on. I understood a lot of things that I missed. Oh, is that the way you're putting it? Yes. Oh, okay. Because I don't know, how many here, anybody here has seen Peaky Blinders? Of course. Oh, yeah. Am I, am, I, am I right, oh, Scott? It's hard, the language... The, oh, I, yeah, I, I couldn't understand it. I didn't know if they were speaking English. Yeah, you should, <laughs> you should watch it with subtitles. Watch it with subtitles. Yes. Makes all yes. the difference did, in the I world. Did, I did, I did, I did. Yeah, they really lean into the, the provisional accents. Now. What? I think they're they doing really the feature version. Yeah. What version? Uh, feature. Oh, feature Peaky Blinders? Yeah, I think so. Really? Do we need it? Hmm. Is anybody uncoupled? What? I got my friends set. Is anybody watching Uncoupled? No, is it good? Yes, I've, I've been watched, curious about it. We watched a couple episodes of it, and we it's not that we didn't like it, we just never got back to more. It's I, mean, uh, I pretty much semi binged the eight episodes because I love Neil Patrick Harris, but there's something about it that seems so forced. It's like they're trying to be like Sex in the City in a real forced well, way. Well, it is a guy who did Sex in the City. Exactly. So mm -hmm. it's just weird. But I mean, it's gonna it's got cliffhangers, so they're gonna have another season. Well, you know, it, it, it's question of it, it, in the series. It's a series about a gay guy, right? Whose boyfriend leaves him, who they've right. been with for what twenty years, something like that. And, and he finds himself in his forties pretty much finding it hard to date because he's too old for that you know and uh that's what it's all about right and uh i um I, what i found was i i don't know how accessible it is to non-gays i was I gonna say that's the problem with it did you would be put off by it because there's a lot of gay sex yeah no but, I mean, but you know something i think that would happen with any couple that broke off and all of a sudden you're in your forties. How do you date again? Yes, mm -hmm. but 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 that that would make it accessible. But they, they, there's there are elements of the show that make it kind of unaccessible. Mm -hmm. I mean, and there's some about his character. It's just I don't I don't really like the character. He's just kind I don't of an, either. Yeah, I agree. And I like his work. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do too. I love him. So I was like, why is your character so cringy? <laughs> It's, I don't know why it is. I mean, like, like he, he, he came out of gay quite a while ago, mm -hmm. but he was still doing How I Met Your Mother when he came out. And on a, who I'm, How I Met Your Mother, he plays this real horn dog and he's mm -hmm. not gay. Right. Uh, and he kept playing it that way. And then he never really played gay, but he started, I think this time he just wants to make a point. You know, I'm gay, damn it. Now you've got to oh, yeah. understand it. Gay all the way. And I understand being gay. It's no different than being straight. Sure. Same problems, you know. Mm -hmm. If you've got a boyfriend or you're who you're living with, it's the same as having a girlfriend you're living with and you argue with and you 
there's no difference in basically in, in but, relationships. Not that he's gay. It's that he's real whiny. And there's just something annoying about his personality. I agree. Yeah. I totally so so agree. everybody come to this show every week to get reviews of movies and <laughs> I do. I do. You know what was a really good movie, and Marjorie had to admit it after we watched it, and that was a Prey, P R E Y. Oh, yes. Which is the, I, I, I well, guess you could call it a sequel. Predator. What? To Predator. It, it that you could call it a sequel to Predator, but some people have read this is what the sequel should have been. Uh, you know, what it is, the, is the it factor. takes place 300 years ago in the 1718 and an Indian tribe who meet up with the Predator. Mm -hmm. But you know something? The Predator was done in the 90s. And for that time, it was fine. No, but it was the first picture. Then they made all those dumb ass sequels. Well, that forget stuck. about that. Alien meets Predator. Predator goes shopping. You know, whatever. <laughs> Take my money. I want to see the Predator go shopping. Yeah, the Predator I mean, goes to Washington. A predator goes to Washington. Uh, <laughs> predator needs money. Yeah, it, 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 you know. So I mean, all those Predator films were dopey, and this thing is really good. I mean, it's scary. It's it's you know, it's about an Indian woman who meets up with these predators and how she deals with them and so on. And I mean, it's it's really but boy, here here comes Brian Neary. What we're up to? How many people now? Wow, fifteen. 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 What what do you got the mask on? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm at work. You're at work. And does yes. everybody have to wear masks still at work? Yeah, yeah. Uh, manufacturing, we do. But you're nobody's in the room with you now, so you can keep the right. mask off. Yeah, he, works, he works for an outfit that makes testing devices. Yes. Yeah. You know what it says at the bottom of my of my window page here? It says heat wave. <laughs> Tell us about it. How hot? It's 91 degrees. <clears throat> 91 here. degrees, folks. Now, what's the humidity? Huh? What's the humidity? Uh, Echo, what is the current humidity? <laughs> right now, the humidity is 51%. 51%. Oh. It feels wow. like 98. Feels mm -hmm. like feels like 98. Okay. Is the visibility unlimited? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I think so. It's pretty clear out there. All right. You know. Yeah. Len, Len, what's our humidity? Uh, thirty-two here. Yeah, we're living. Which, we're which living is in really the, high. We're living in the back of our apartment. I've seen it as low as four here. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because we're living in the back of our apartment. We don't have air conditioners in the front of our apartment. <clears throat> we don't have them because we never used them anyway before. It's, right. just, it's really hot. We close the door. And the back part of the apartment is pretty well served by two uh, air conditioners. Right. And I'm going to hardly wait to see the electric bill this month. Yep. It's going to be a big and one. By the way, by the, Mike Nolan. Well, I don't remember Mike Nolan, but let's see who Mike Nolan is here. Jeez. If he, uh, if, unless he's a problem, in which case we'll get rid of him. <laughs> Candidate number 16, sign in. <laughs> Hello, Mike. <laughs> Mike? We're still connecting. They still, yeah. uh, you're, you're still connecting your audio. Mm. Cool hat. Huh? Cool hat. Yeah. It, it's cool hat day between uh, Edward Berger and... Hello, Mike. How are you? Mike? I'm just fine, Alex. How are you doing? Yeah, where Happy are you calling summer. from, Mike? San Leandro, California. San Leandro. <laughs> how many California people we got here right now? I guess just uh, one, two, three. William, you're where, William? Yuba City. Yuba City. Le uh, you yeah. had some fires up there, right? Yeah, we, we got lots of fires. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, pretty. you know what's going to happen? One day they're going to make an announcement. Congratulations. There are no more fires in California because there's nothing left to burn. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. what I keep asking. It's like, is there really anything left to burn up here? Because it's, yeah. it's all gone. Yeah. Sure. Only weed. Yeah, Sh Charlene. Yeah. Yeah. You're where again? You're in. Uh, I'm in Castro Valley. Where? 
Castro Valley. Castro Valley. Mm -hmm. okay. So we got a lot oh, of right over the hill. Yeah. And I'm in Lodi, and I'll be driving through all those areas going home in about an hour. <laughs> when, are you, when are you stopping in for a beer, for Christ's sake? Jeez. Yeah, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> you get, send me your address, Lynn, and I'll see where, where you are. Right. Yeah. Well, you drive, drive right by. I mean, literally. One well, you, you've got to get home to your wife and kids. <laughs> yeah. You know. Right. Adrian's waiting for him. Yeah. 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 So anyway, hey, uh, hey Alex. Yeah, yeah. Um, have you have we talked about or have you watched the Industrial Light and Magic special on uh, yeah, Disney yeah. Plus yet? Yeah. Have we talked about it already? Yeah, I don't think so. Oh man, I'm mm -hmm. I'm halfway through it right now and I'm riveted. Very good. It's very good. It's just a really nice history of uh, the effects house that uh, uh, George Lucas created called Industrial Light and Magic. I have a great uh, I have a great baseball jacket they gave me. Sure. big logo on the back of the baseball jacket and, you know um one of my pride and joys i still have it and still still in good shape you've seen it haven't you shecky yeah 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 is this a documentary or yeah it's a, a documentary docuseries yeah yeah where is it it's disney on plus. disney plus, disney plus. Yeah, oh, i'll tell you what i'll tell you what it does it, it makes you realize how, what a great game changer they were you know yeah, they were punk rock too it was awesome yeah yeah but i mean they yeah. you know they invented they from the ground up they invented the technology and uh a technology that had never existed prior to that they did special effects but they did them in very non-digital well they these weren't digital either i mean the original star wars those were models that you know were being used so um but it's very good it is excellent um was there anything else I watched on Disney Plus? No, no. A lot of the stuff they do where they do these documentaries on how things were done is quite interesting. Uh, Len, your neck of the woods? Livermore. Is, yeah. Yeah. You still have the big, you still have the Livermore Labs out there, right? We do, yes, yes. Like there's 7,500 people out there. Yeah. Doing all kinds of who knows what. Nobody <laughs> They had this place called Livermore Labs, and <coughs> nobody knew what they did at Livermore Labs. And they still well, don't do it. Well, they, you know, they, they used to do a lot of nuclear stuff. Now they've switched over to more uh, mundane things like, uh, you know, health care things and tests and things like what Brian does, I guess. Mm -hmm. and they do yeah. have the super collider out there, which is pretty cool. <laughs> I did get a chance to see it. Oh, you okay. saw it? They had an open house about 10 years ago and my ex-wife worked there. And I got to stand in the room where they where all of the um, the pipes come to this one central point that's the size of a pin where the thing happens. And it was really amazing. Well, explain the, National the, the, facility. Explain the nuclear the uh, explain what it is exactly, the collider. It's I mean it, it's it gets <laughs> particles up to a speed. And then um, they all come, they all smash into each other at one central point. And for that one billionth of a second, they create whatever it is they're trying to create. <laughs> well, have they should. created it yet? Oh, yeah, yeah. No. They've, run, they've run, they've run, they run it all the time. Sure, sure, sure. But what do they do with the material once the collision takes place? There's got to be a product that comes out. No. no? Scott, I mean, you seem to know something. I, like this. I think it just all gets sucked into the vacuum that it's probably all under extreme vacuums and everything like that it is. And charlie it is. should know charlie yeah, should you know, know. i was i got a phone call so i don't know what y'all are talking about <laughs> <We're> talking about, <laughs> these, about, about balls and strikes or what <laughs> we're talking about the super collider uh at livermore labs and what a super collider does it's and a huge you, ring that, they have it. these giant magnetic fields that accelerate Whatever they're whether it's electron, proton, or whatever it is, to to close to light speed and then smash them together to create other particles. Now, Charlie, tell everybody uh, what you have your degree in. Astrophysics. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you know? They actually created a, an element for a millionth of a second called that they've now named Livermorium. So it's, okay, it's, good. It's, yeah. it's number they, one. The is that 115? And they decay. 115 is it? Yeah, it's 115. 
Okay, well then. So you go. you so Charlie, you studied astrophysics. What do you think of uh, what's his name, the astrophysicist who's so popular now? Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've yeah. seen him in and and you know he he came to speak in Phoenix when I lived there. It's one one six, Mike. Oh, one one six. Thank you. <laughs> What's he came. To, he came to speak in Akron too. It was wonderful. Yeah, was was, two well, hours. He, I think he's terrific, but I just want to ask an astrophysicist because some people would, you know, maybe they're jealous of him, and they go, "Oh, he's, he's full of crap." <laughs> in fact, you know, he got his his master's at the University of Texas, the same school I was at. Oh, really? Yeah. So, what did you do with your degree? Did you actually Nothing. use it? No, nope, I programmed computers. No. <laughs> so, uh, I never used my astrophysics degree. I well, I shouldn't say never. I taught while I was a grad student. Well, God knows, you know, that uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson has certainly used his. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love his Cosmos series that he picked up yeah. from Carl Sagan. Yeah. Uh, I used to love Carl Sagan. He yeah. was a you know what? I always, uh, somebody who goes to school like you did for astrophysics, I always like to ask them, was there any particular part of the subject matter? That you flunk. <laughs> I mean, like, did you flunk protons, for instance? <laughs> well, quantum mechanics was kind of tough. I have to admit really? that. Yeah. Oh, but Alex, Alex, didn't you on your radio show? Didn't you used to say that the doctors? You, you, you don't know what doctors because they may have flunked one subject and that subject could be the subject yeah, that nobody, you're in for no, nobody ever asked yeah i'll get to you in a second there uh, vernon i see your hand up uh mike my, my big argument was is that you go to a doctor he's got all those plaques on the wall from the hospital the places he's graduated from but right. let's say you're going in for a kidney problem uh -huh. you know you only have to get 70 percent of the questions correct in order to get your degree yeah. <laughs> so that being the case, maybe he flunked kidney, but it doesn't say it on the plaque. <laughs> you know, so well, anyway, uh, uh, yes, Vernon. Doctor that uh, was done practicing. What? Yeah. A friend, a friend of mine always said he wanted to find a doctor that was done practicing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know who else didn't use his uh, astrophysics degree was Brian May, the lead guitarist for Queen. Yes. yes. Brian May, who I, I I forget about him being with Queen. The reason he's a star with me is he is one of the biggest collectors of 3D oh. in the oh. world. Oh. He did, and he did a, a documentary on the BBC all about 3D and hmm. how it came to be. And you know, he put out a book. We have a book that Marjorie bought me. Yeah. Of, of this this guy who did 3D imagery of this little village, little Irish village, back about a uh, hundred years ago, and wow. we have a complete with the 3D viewer and everything like that. You know? That's great. That's cool. That was because Brian May mentioned it on this documentary, <laughs> and he he was a big 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 fan of 3D, which <laughs> I was. I'm a big he, fan of Queen. Yeah, oh, me too. I I saw them back in I think eighty or something like that. Unbelievable. Gee, they should have put out a three D movie of Queen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't. I mean, with Brian May being that big a fan, even while he was with Queen and so on. Well, he's still with Queen. Yeah. yeah. Not Who's really singing good. in Queen now? Who's the Adam Lambert. Adam Lambert. Adam Lambert. Adam Lambert. Yeah, he was a uh, he won uh, what America's uh, what do you call? Oh, he was runner-up. He was runner-up. He was runner-up. Runner oh, he didn't runner even up. win. Oh, okay. Oh, well, you know. Oh, gosh. But he's gay, so he gets to play that part. Oh, <laughs> just, just saying, just saying. Um, but uh, how hot is it where you are, Paula? It's got to be hellish, right? Uh, it's not as bad as where you are. You know what I was wondering? I was wondering how many of the people here uh, um, are still practicing what they went to school for? You know? The, oh, the, that's uh, a good question. Well, uh, there's there oh, Mandy. <laughs> Mandy, what did you go to school for? Accounting. What? Accounting. Accounting. And, and that's what you're doing, right? 
Yes. Do you have a, a, a just a degree in accounting or do you have a PhD? Yeah. No, no CPA, nothing like that. Not that. You know just, who has, is any, how many people here? Well, let me put it this way. I'm married to a PhD, right? Marjorie? <laughs> there we go. So, you, <laughs> no, do you have a PhD? I have a master's. A master's. All right. She has a master's degree. All right. That's good. I didn't even get through college. <laughs> Man, okay. I wish it was a PhD. I was ready to call her Dr. Miller for the rest of my life right there. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you have, Rick? You have a you have a degree in a master's in finance. A master's in finance. Right. Yeah. And then as um Mike learned today, you know, I some some friend of ours got me into television. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. That worked out. Well, Best Steve, birthday present Steve ever. Were mentioning earlier got you into that show. And I never left. <laughs> he got you into the show about three months into Letterman's nighttime show, right? Was it three months? No, I was there one month in. One month in. But and... I was doing stuff on the phone from home. Like the first thing that was on the show was Larry Bud doing the opening of, uh, what was it, Frankenstein. And I was on the phone with Steve Weiner dictating it to him. Oh, okay. So that was, so you were working at that point for them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, basically, I think I've, if anyone cares, I was a consultant. And then after about three months, they go like, you're making too much money. You have to go on staff. Okay. So then you became <laughs> film coordinator. Well, I had that title when I was being paid a hundred dollars a day as you know yeah yeah but anyway so uh so you so you did that and and so steve got him the job and a year later steve was fired so yep. and and shecky stayed there for the next 30 years hmm. 30 uh, 82 to 2015 so whatever that is 33 33 yeah. years mm -hmm. yeah That's not a bad run yeah not a bad <laughs> run at all um, well, I knew where the bodies were buried, as I always like to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He had the goods on Dave. Yeah. He must have he had his password. He watched him masturbate on. on <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So, so, how many people here actually have a, either a master's or a PhD? Would you raise your hand? Okay. Wow. Wow. Smart, smart wow. I'm, the only, I'm the only stupid one here. <laughs> <laughs> well, my oh, degree great. hung on the wall at Letterman. That's all, you know, that was it. What did you what did you get? Masters? Yeah, masters yeah. in masters finance. In, in finance. And you never used that one day in your life, did you? <laughs> Except in you for your own to make a lot of money. Huh? <laughs> no, but I mean, I, outside of the fact that you know how no, to not working them. in the financial industry. Wait a minute. Do he you use hire... it to keep his stockbroker honest, man? Wait a minute. I have a, a question. Do you, hire, do you hire an accountant every year to do your taxes? Yeah. You have a master's in accounting. Why don't you do your own taxes? No, it's in finance, which is not accounting. Oh, okay, or financing. Okay, let me ask. Let me ask uh, Mandy. Mandy. Yes. Yes. Do you do your own taxes? Um, I did, when I was married, I did not because my ex-husband has. He's a a contractor and a builder and a developer, and he has like four businesses, and it was just. It was too complicated. complicated. Why didn't he hire yeah. you as an accountant? <laughs> oh, he always wanted me to come work with him. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, do you, now do you do your own taxes? You know, I do mine on TurboTax. Oh, okay. <laughs> so she she at least is using that degree to some degree. Yeah. yeah. So mine are not too complicated anymore, but when they were with my ex-husband, it was just a lot. Is a uh, lot. Paula, did you get you got a degree? I know that because you went. Uh, yeah, to yeah, I, I have several, but I want <laughs> I, I wanted to, to to pose a question to Marjorie. I wonder if Marjorie, Marjorie, do you remember 
that and when we were in high school, uh, there was a, a fellow by the name of Elliot Bader and our friend Phyllis, who later became a comedian said, uh, could we call him master? Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> guess what? What was the what? Bader. Bader. <laughs> Bader. Very good. Uh, uh, you know what I just noticed about Mike Nolan? Mike Nolan in is in a swimming pool. Yeah. Look at him. Yeah. Like and him. he's been there for most of this show. Are you starting to shrivel yet? Shrinkage. There's a little bit of shrinkage. Yeah. But... <laughs> how, yeah. how hot is it where you are? Uh, it's in the high 70s and the pool is about 87. What is it? New That's York. Nothing. We do know that in the, it, since the end of June, we have not had one day under 80. Yeah. You know, at night it might go down, but under 80 is the high. Yeah, he knew. That's, brutal. that's brutal. That's brutal. <laughs> yeah, but then we're going to complain when we hit winter and it's 20 degrees every day. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, Bobaker said, hold my beer. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Who said, hold your beer? Bobaker. Oh. We still haven't been in the 70s here in, in two months. It's always in the 80s or 100. Yeah. I mean, for a low in the 80s. And high right now it's 104. But so. supposedly, <laughs> supposedly in in New York, at least during uh, say where was it July, you have some days when it's down in the 70s. High. We're not one right now. Yeah. What were you gonna say, William? Feels like 90. I, I was gonna. I was gonna say that the one thing I love about winters in New York is watching them on television from my house in California. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You know something though? This winter, did we have any snow this year, winter? No, like, one nothing, day. Nothing that's snowed. Nothing that's snowed. One snow. day it snowed like crazy in the morning and then it melted by the afternoon. And when I first moved to New York 30 years ago, we had winters where, I mean, the snow was just, as they say Brutal. in Jewish religion, up to your puppet. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think we had one day where there was like six inches. Yeah. Which is like, yeah, fine. Well, do you, but I remember it that it got bad enough that they would, the, the snow plows would come along and they like build these mountains of snow. Oh, yeah. Oh, I haven't seen that since I've been back. Oh. Uh, you know, and you'll never see it again, Alex. You're, you're probably right, Marjorie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, back when I was in high school and up in state of New York, we used to get. Two, two to 300 inches a season. You know, I, I just don't understand people who don't believe in global warming. And I have a friend who doesn't. And I don't know how you can't believe in it. And people go, well, you know, it's been, it's been hot, but that doesn't mean it gets cold, too, in the winters. And I go, yeah. global warming, the forest fires, the flooding, all of that. That's There's, there's almost thing. no ice left in the Arctic. That's mm -hmm. nature giving you the finger, for Christ's yeah. sake. You know that's and why. That's why it should be called. Things. It should be called climate change instead of global warming. Uh, you know, yeah, exactly. Good, but, that's exactly right, Vernon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was so happy today that we got a, a little bit of rain. Mm. Yeah, I was out driving, and all of a sudden it's raining. And it's like, wait a minute, this makes no sense. Wow, it's great. Well, the place that that used to happen was when I worked for a short time in Hawaii. Wow. And, and it would it would be there would be a storm, literally a storm on one side of the street. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> and on the other side of the street, the sun was shining and it was a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. I never could figure out how that happened, but you'd actually be sitting there. All of a sudden, the downpour would happen, and it, the get to get mm -hmm. out of it, you would just walk to the other side of the street. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't understand that. Yeah. I lived well, in Seattle once. I'll tell you, he's keeping cool. Mike is keeping cool. Oh, yeah. Is that your pool or what? whose pool is that? Uh, yeah, it's been my pool since 1994. Oh, okay. Well, well, maybe, maybe we'll come out there and take a dip sometime. 
Yeah, please do. Yeah. Maybe right. I'll do I'll do the show from my pool next week. Yeah, no, it's it's a, rather large. Oh, you, you have a pool, uh, then? Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Oh, good. How many people have a pool that I can go visit? Uh, <laughs> you have a pool, Brian? Yeah, we have one of those uh, uh, above ground that we uh, have. To assist, yeah. yeah well, that doesn't count. Well, we, we want to do one, but it's we did too much already this year. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, and listen, it's you're, not for us to get kind of... Maybe you have to sell that car. <laughs> <laughs> I never even looked over to see how many people might have been watching us here. Uh, and uh, let me see here. Let me just do this. I, I Probably didn't, four. I didn't even look to see if we were going across. Yeah, four people are watching. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, not one. Then I sign off, and it says, you know, fifty-five or something like that. Oh, whatever. But anyway, hey, listen, great seeing you all again this week. It's and 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 it will. This is like what do we got here? We have sixteen people. Right. Yeah. Very cool. It's very cool. So <laughs> let me, I better start saying goodbye because it's going to take a half hour to do it. <laughs> Arlene, thank you so much. Always nice seeing you here. William Ferguson, glad you could join us. Do it again. Yes. Uh, Mandy, of course, you know, the pleasure is all ours. Glad uh, I got to be today. What, what were you going to say? I said, glad I got to be on today. Yeah, I'm glad you did too. Uh, Len LaFrisco, thank you so much for your participation as um, as for Marjorie Miller as well. Rick Sheckman, always nice to have you here. Scott Boddicker, wonderful. Paula, we love, love you like crazy and miss you and you got to get back out here to see us. Charlie Wallace, um, you know, if I have an astrophysics question, I'll ask you. <laughs> uh, Jeff Stein, thank you so much. Vernon Nunn, mm. down in Kentucky, nice to see you. Uh, mm. uh, Mike Chisholm, up there in Canada. Brian Neary, um, down in Lodi. <laughs> Mike Nolan, uh, thank you for joining us from your pool out in California. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give sure. you a big wave, wave goodbye, too. And uh, we'll see you all soon. Mm. Oh, see you. Uh, Okay. Thank you. <laughs> See you.